Uh, hello everyone, and welcome to part 4 in our Pottery Racing tutorial series. So, uh, in this part we're going to uh, work on this back here a bit, and finish up the top and add this little uh, pulley section for the rope. So, uh, to start out with, I want to make this look a bit more you know, like a jet engine here. So we're going to, uh, hold on, let me turn on my start display for screencast keys of course. So, select this loop here. I'm going to make a uh, pivot point uh, median, and we'll just move this back a little bit, and then scale it up a touch to keep our uh, details in line. And then we'll uh, extrude it out some, and bring it down a little bit. And I also want to take off this uh, mean crease here, because I feel like it's just not giving me a good shape. So, um, if you look at actual engines, right, they taper off some. And uh, that's kind of the look we want to go for. Nothing too fancy. I like to keep it a bit on the simple side. So we have that, just a nice little cone. So um, they also usually have a uh, inner cone that the thrust, you know, peaks around. So we're going to go back into edit mode and have this selected. Shift S, cursor to selected, and cursor's there. So we'll go back to object mode here, and we'll add in a cylinder. And over here on the vertices, we'll probably make it just uh, 16 for now because we'll, put, we'll add a subsurf to it and we don't want to go too crazy. Rotate it 90 degrees and we'll just scale it down a few times. Uh, that looks about good. And then we'll just make it look like a cone. So the best way to do that is to add in a loop cut in the center, loop cut here, and maybe we'll do another one right here and just play with this. So I'll bring this out a little bit. We don't want it to be uh, too exaggerated. We definitely want it to have the f overall feel. So there is that. Uh, make it a tad bigger. Uh, of course we want the point to be around so we delete this face. Faces only. Loop cut that. Uh, e to extrude. And Alt M at center. And now we have a cone, and we just want this to uh, line up with the rest of it. And there we have that. And then uh, I like to put a bit of a back on it here, so we'll add one more loop cut. Select. Uh, we only want the faces right here. So we just unselect that, extrude this, and uh, bring it out some. And there we have that. Alt H to bring uh, the body back. And then we'll go through and we'll just add that subdivision to make it look nice and smooth. And of course, set the shading to smooth as well. So there we have that. So, also with this inside here, uh, we don't have anything there. And I don't think we're going to go through and really model anything because it's really not necessary. But I do like to add a couple of panels so that way then you, uh, you know, it'd be black on the inside and add the illusion that there are things there. So, go into tab mode here on this. Uh, first of all, let's hide the fan. Let's also hide the cone, and we'll even hide the top here. So we're going to edit mode, and uh, ooh, right here we have a couple issues on these side cylinders, just from I guess when we moved them. So uh, select a vertice or a face or a edge on all of these, and then we will Control L, select them all, and make normals consistent. And there we are now. The shading matches everything else. So, as I was in edit mode, uh, so I went to add a panel inside here, and I found the best way to do that was to shift S, cursor to selection, and then just simply add in a circle. And over on the right side, make it something really low. Like, I think we can get away with 12, and that's even probably a bit overkill for this. So, we will rotate it 90 degrees scale it down so it fits on the inside. So we want uh, one back here, right at the end of the engine. Uh, F to fill faces. And this way then, we can put in you know, a light or whatever back there and add to the illusion that it's blowing off smoke and heat. So we take that, Shift D to duplicate it, we'll bring it all the way over to the front. We want it just behind the fan. Bring that up. Make sure it's not. Make sure it uh, cuts through these faces, but isn't melting over. And this one has a weird normal, so we're going to rotate it 90 or 180 degrees, and there you can see the shading difference. 
So, we have that, you know, about taken care of. It's a, it's a lot more plain compared to the one over here. And, of course, you can go through and you can add more details like this. It's all up to you. Uh, the other thing that I would like to do to finish off this top was um, a nice person called Evan pointed out to me that there's a better way to do the shading on this top bit. So, select everything with A. And in the main crease, just make it zero. And then on your modifier tabs, choose bevel. Now what happens when you add the modifier over here, uh, it puts it on the bottom. And it doesn't do anything there because it needs to be above the rest of the modifiers. So here we have it above the rest of the modifiers. And then we want to make the limit method rather than none. We want angle. And you can see here it's made everything nice and sharp. And we want the angle limit maybe about 40 or even, or even 50. You can play with that, of course. You know, if you went through and you added different types of geometry, do what you need to to uh, fit your needs. I think 50 looks just fine for us. And um, you know, the immediate issue we have is this weird circle here. Now, the best way I found to get rid of this was to take these four faces and subdivide them. Uh, and we'll do it two times to get rid of all of that. No, two times is enough. So, once more. And, um... Now, people are going crazy because this is bad for geometry right here. Adding this in, and I completely agree with you, but it's just the uh, best way I found to work with it without, um, you know, totally reinventing how it works. And also, I want to see if we can get this flat here. So, SY0. And there we go. Now we have a nice flat face as well. So, that's good. Uh, no problems with that. And then we set the shading back to smooth. And you see there are no shading issues. And it looks very clean. It even thickened up this back some. Which is good. Um, I think we'll actually take the bottom here. And uh, I think we'll make it just a tad thicker. It's not quite matching the rest of the proportions. So hide this bit. Go down here. And then turn off your subdivisions here. On the right side. We can collapse some of these. And just turn that off. And now we can see all of our geometry for what it is, select these faces, and then we will just, oh, we gotta get these front ones, and then we're gonna bring back the, you know, the engine part, and extrude these down just, just a little bit, and then we can put our subsurf back on, there we go, I think that looks a lot cleaner, a bit better, a bit more realistic, so, um, before moving on to adding the rope portion, I want to go in and add some, well, I just call them dummy textures. So we're going to go into cycles, because we're going to render it ultimately in there anyway. And generally, I create two textures. I create an else texture, so that's everything. And then I create a dummy black texture. So what I like about this, and you can change it over here, and then under settings, you have to make the viewport color. Uh, black as well, and this can help us just get an idea of where we're going to put colors. So, if we come up here and we select all of these vents, you can hit C and just drag across, and it selects them all, and then Control L, and then you just over here on the right side you hit Assign for the black, and there we have it. Those are all black, and then I want to do the exact same thing here for the inside of this thruster. And actually, this is a lot easier if we turn off our subdivision once again because, of course, this one has inside faces here. And we don't want that. So, right there, I hit number pad, period, and it recentered my view around a specific location. And then this is a little wonky, just because of the way we flattened it to make it look nice. And then just assign the black there. And then I want to do the same thing with this one for our inside panels here. See if I can if I can get at this one. There we go. Oh, first, um, this whole object has nothing on it, so we're going to choose the else, and now let's apply that to everything, and then we can add another color, the black, and then assign it on. And now you can just see now it has just an emptiness inside because there is no light in there anyway. What is this? Is that is that melting through? Nope. And then I think we'll also go through, and we'll make these the black as well. Oh, and uh, this. So, this is just giving us an idea of where we're going to put some of our textures. Um, also, just brings it to life just, just a little bit, you know, keeps you from worrying about certain bits. 
which is important. So the next bit we're going to make is, uh, you know, just a little hook that allows the rope to latch on. So I don't usually get too crazy with this part because it's never been like a major uh, point of it for me. And of course, if you wanted to go through and add like really crazy rigging to it and make it super dynamic, go for it. But I don't think I will. So uh, we'll start off with just adding a cylinder. 16 vertices should be fine. Rotate it and we want to scale it down to about just what it would be slightly thicker than what you want your actual rope to be. I don't know. Some people want to do, you know, super thick ropes, I think. I think that's about good. And then we want to make it look like it's uh, able to latch on, so the best way to do that is to extrude this out a little bit, grab these faces, extrude them out, and we want to shift, uh, shift Y to just extrude them along these vertices, and select these faces, E, Y, that brings out, then the rope can connect into there. And then we can bring this one up. You know, and I just, I just totally eyeball this section. So if you're a person, like I agree, I normally like it when I can get, uh, you know, hard answers in my tutorials, but this is just one of those positions where you really can't. So right now I've messed up the center of it, and this gives us a good point to teach how to do that. So select everything, cursor to selected, and under object, go to transform and uh, origin to 3D cursor, and there it's moved the origin of the object. So next bit we're going to add is just a very simple, uh, what, do, what do I want to do, a cube here? And just to add uh, mounts for it. So we would just move this over, and of course, you know, you can feel free to get crazy with this if you wanted to go out and look up like truss modeling. You could get, uh, you could get really fancy with this. I'm not going to for the purposes of this tutorial. But just know that, that you are more than free to have that option. Uh, then we'll slide this out. Make it a bit angled. Uh, and I do think I will make it hollow. So we'll just E and scale that down. Mm. Scale it weird. So S, Shift, X. Just go on these vertices. Just a little bit. And we faces. And then we just have to... Uh, fill in these interfaces to give it a nice, uh, I don't know, truss style look, I guess. There we go. Now we have that. Then we will take this, Control L, and then we will Shift D, change the pivot point to 3D cursor, S, X, negative 1. Mirrors it on the other side and flips all of the normals on us. So let's make normals consistent once more. And here we have this. And finally, I'll add um, a cylinder. With this one just 10. Uh, right down the center so it, it does look like it's pivoting on something by itself. Uh, just a little bit of, you know, added how could it work. I guess that's what this is really all about. You know, you don't have to make it. You have to make it look like it works. We don't have to actually have to make it work, and that's a really important thing to keep in mind when we're doing this. And of course, I want to apply our os texture to this little mount. And then uh, you can go through and you can add a subdivision subsurf. And of course, everything's gotten all weird on us, and we'll add that bevel again. Put that on the top, and then you can see where it's. You know, it's doing its best to make everything flat and nice. Set the angle. Try 50 again. Uh, you can just slide this bar and see where you want it to be at. I think actually, let's leave it with none for now. And this this will look just fine for us. It's just going to be black anyway and on the top. Actually, it, it, overall, it seems just a bit too high. So I'm going to take the squares here. Z. Select them. Z, select the bottoms, move them up, uh, select everything with Control L, and then just move it down to the inside. And that looks uh, pretty good for me. And then uh, how we go about creating a rope, we will also do. So the rope is just a curve. 
Now, it doesn't really matter where you insert it at, so we'll just do it here. Bezier curve. Rotate it 90 degrees. And obviously one part's going to hook into the car. So we want to line it up with the inside of this. So select here. Select this face. Shift S, cursor to selected. Here's our curve. Rotate it around. And then we have to shift S, cursor to selected. And then right here, change it to uh, medium point. R, rotate with control. And then we want to make it full deform. Depth 0 0.05. And then we can turn the resolution up to 2, make it nice and rounded. And then now it's just a matter of changing the depth till it hits. It's a matter of changing the depth till it hits uh, you know, about the size you want. So I wanted to fill that entire inside circle there. Or just about so. So that looks fine for me. And I think I will also make the color our black. And then, of course, we just drag it out here. And then we'll hook it to the car once we make it. So another issue we have, uh, real quick looking at this, is when I move this one, it can influence over here. Now if that's an issue, uh, just subdivide it once like you would with a loop cut. But that doesn't appear to be any sort of problem for this example. So I believe that we will end it there. Uh, this is basically done for what we're going to do on the front thruster. So if you have any questions or comments, please comment them below. And tune in next time. Thank you.